Friday, welcome back to the underground broadcast. Cheers, motherfuckers. Let me hit it for the motherfucking cunt who was here first today. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slob ready, because the cunt is here. Cheers, the car, you motherfucker. Thank you for being here from Australia. And for Super Saiyan Joku, who's always here as well. I want to have the world, the world's most comfortable uh, pair of ultra soft. Uh, 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 And then let's hit it for the one and only Gomer motherfucking Kyle. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pie. Private Pile, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. One, two, three. Shazam. Ah, oh, yeah. Cheers, you motherfuckers. And remember, it's always. <laughs> Happy Friday. Thank you for being here, motherfuckers. You know how we do when we do what it is that we do on this bitch. Uh, for those of you who were there last Saturday, uh, our illegal underground broadcast channel got shut down. Uh, yeah, the illegal one got shut down because <laughs> they caught us. It went, it went on for the whole night. It just the last two fucking matches. The women's ladder money in the bank and it was only it was already at the end. What's her name? Uh, st uh I don't even Stratus st The girl no one likes. <laughs> she won the blonde. It should have been Chelsea. I was super super pissed. And then um and of course the final match and, and shit. Um God damn it. Uh yeah, so I don't know. There's no way to get. You see my dog over there depressed on the couch. He's like, oh, he's wearing makeup again. <laughs> Accept it. It's it's 2012 or 2024. You got to live with it. That's how I look. All right. Live with it. Anyways. uh, Yeah, so I guess we can't be watching fucking wrestling on YouTube anymore. Uh, I don't know, fellas. They shut us down. So, I mean, I think... Gomer, you can remind me. We still have the emergency one, but I'm not going to risk the emergency. The emergency is in case this one gets blocked because of a trailer or some ass that I show you by mistake. If that gets, then we go to the emergency one. So I don't want to waste the emergency one on that shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, we watched the pay-per-view, Gomer. Where we, we watched it on Discord, and remember... Me, you, and, and uh, one time, and he who should not be named. Um, we watched, uh, was it a pay-per-view? We watched something on Discord. And did we get banned? I don't remember. Did it get shut down when we were watching it? Because we were playing the sound also. I think we were playing the sound. Gomer, if you can confirm this for me. And I don't know why the chat is not coming now. I just realized the chat's not on here. God damn it. What happened? Okay, sorry about all that. I don't know where the chat is right here, so I'm moving into another screen. I gotta fix this later. I'm, 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 I gotta fix this later. So I'm gonna move on to another screen while we keep on talking about this. Um, 
Gomer, so I, I'm thinking what I'm going to end up doing is the next time there's a pay-per-view, I'll just put the link to uh, my Discord, and then whoever wants to come to the Discord, we can watch it there. Well, obviously, I'm not going to be streaming it on YouTube, but we can watch it on the Discord, and it'll be with the sound, so it'll be even better, and it's more private, you know, so it won't be like random-ass motherfuckers, it'll only be people who have the actual link, like the woke pack and shit. Super Saiyan Joku, you can finally enjoy it with sound. <laughs> anyways uh so that's just something i'm thinking about i don't know we'll see man i'm getting tired of getting banned and shit all the time it's depressing uh but especially because we don't even have motherfuckers uh, subscribe to us and shit and we have 600 fucking subscribers and only 20 views on the goddamn fucking podcast fuck you uh but anyways yeah uh we can, we can, uh, we can definitely do it on Discord, uh, next time there's a pay-per-view. I forget which one's next. I'll figure it out, and I'll let you guys know on the next one, and shit. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we're still weeks away. I don't know, WE has a pay-per-view every two weeks, and shit. Uh, it's just an app you download, Super Saiyan Joe Koo, that's all. You just download it, and that's it. You get in, and it's like a, it's like a chat room. And you get in the chat room, and you can start, and I share the screen, what I'm watching. And you watch it just like that and you can also talk on it right gomer i think you were talking we were talking we were talking all of us were talking so we can actually hear each other and shit it'll be cool we'll try it out we'll try it out y'all motherfuckers SummerSlam, yeah 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 or wembley i, I think SummerSlam's first I, I forget which one is, is it all out at wembley or SummerSlam? one of them my summer slam might be first <laughs> Uh, but anyways, social medias, of course, at Sunman665 for the for the X, no longer Twitter, officially, and at the underscore underground underscore broadcast for the IG, and the TikTok is at the underground broadcast, but I'm not uploading shit anymore because they shadow banned us, okay? But it's there if you want to follow it. Just don't expect any updates on it. Anyways, uh... Whatever you send me, just like Super Saiyan Joku sent me this earlier today, uh, I will post here. You know, it could be anything. Uh, Super Saiyan Joku sent me this shit, and it said, uh, Okay, okay, son of man, at the underground broadcast, you and the fellow woke pack was clowning me for the bud last week. Oh, yeah, that fucking uh, Labrador. <laughs> that Labrador bud you bought. Uh, so what up now? Labrador strains. Yes, the bag and pre-rolls was from the local Mexicans down the street. It looked like the local Mexicans down the street sold you that ass. Uh, but this white widow chem dog is from another planet. So burn it up, my me cheers, my flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. Mar marijuana hashtag mary jane hashtag your local drug dealer this guy not me the mexicans <laughs> hashtag smoke weed every day oh yeah um damn it man um i get jealous when i see you opening that shit and, and, and it looks amazing it looks amazing uh it looks amazing i will tell you this uh I think we're getting closer in my state. Closer. Because I went and bought this crap. I went and, I went, because I, I keep going every every time I'm driving around and shit because of my job. I stop at a different head shop or a different one that says CBD or whatever. And I stop and I said, what is the strongest shit you have? That's the question I ask always. What is the strongest shit you have? I don't care what it is. Just let me see it. How much does it cost? This fucking little Asian dude said, this one, man. And it says, uh, guava. And it's just like that and then it's got a little warning it's go right right here uh it's got like a little pot leaf warning and it says honey bun gelato indica and uh it says indica which i'm, I'm not a big uh, uh fan of indica because to me it uh kind of puts you to sleep a little bit uh, i prefer sativa but i like indica when i just want to fucking you know just lay around and shit but anyways it says a bunch of warnings about that. This is only like let 0.3% or I don't know what and that it's legal and shit. Uh, I bought it. 
and it it looks like weed and it smells tons like fucking weed i mean it looks just like it and it smells tons like it uh we're about to try it out fellas oh yeah i say this for y'all motherfuckers i see what this fucking tastes like <laughs> It smells good. I just don't know what the fuck this is gonna make me feel like. Let's see this if this is real weed or not. We're about to find out. The guy swore he goes, "This the strongest shit." And he go, he also told me he goes, uh, "If you need to pass a drug test, I also wouldn't be smoking this." He goes, "You could probably fail." And I said, "Nah, it's cool." I mean, it tastes like weed. I'll be taking small hits throughout the podcast. You know what it is. Probably shouldn't be smoking. It's been a long time. Oh, it's really... I forgot how thick the smoke is. But for a while, I've been doing the edibles. These are the caps I got. Super Saiyan Joku. They're sour rings. But these have, like... Uh, some shit from the mushrooms in it. THC Delta 9 and THCP is in this. Um... Uh, I took two of these. Five, they're, they're 500 milligrams each. Each uh, mushroom cap or whatever. I felt super happy. But I also felt fucked up. Like I was tripping. Like I couldn't walk. Like I thought I was going to like fall over and shit. Or something. I was trying to walk my dog. And I was tripping over myself. And I was like man this is this is like the stay at home type of shit. Um, then I went to another head shop. And I asked some kid. Who was there working? Some fucking stoner. I told him, what's the strongest shit you have? Or that you like? Because he was, st you could tell. I saw him. I saw his face. He was fucked up. And he said, oh, this is what I like. And he showed me this. I don't know if you could see it. It's hard to focus. It says, uh, Essence Blend. Uh, damn. I'm getting old. 2,000 milligrams of candy, rain, THCA, THCP, uh, some other shit that I can't read because I'm wearing my contacts. I'm sorry about that. You're making me cry trying to read. But anyways, it's basically one of these motherfuckers, you know, and, and, and it's got the little battery shit and I've been smoking this. I've been smoking this uh, all week, and uh, the vape is definitely smoother than the smoke I just smoke. It is smoother. It doesn't hurt at all. Very smooth. Every once in a while, like right now, <coughs> I might cough. I don't know why. It doesn't even feel like it's in there, but uh, I cough. This really mellows me out. <laughs> I see why that kid likes it. But all these things that I'm that I'm that I'm buying and I'm trying, y'all. Um they uh they're not weed. You know? Well, because I've been smoking weed all my life. <laughs> There's like something missing from them. Like I don't even know how to explain it. Like maybe the euphoria. There's just like there's something that's missing. Something that makes me be like, ah, oh, yeah. it's the THC. Because that's what all this shit. This shit is not THC. It's THCP, THCB, THCA. It's all this ass Delta nines and Delta tens. I ordered online a Delta eleven. Uh, that's something that they just made, and they even said get it right now because we don't even know if this is considered legal. So we're setting it right now while we can. They might say this is actually illegal. So I ordered Delta 9 to see. They say that's probably the strongest shit they've ever been able to get. Uh, probably the closest thing to being weed. Um, but yeah. Uh, Super Saiyan Joku. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you know what I mean. That's all I need to know. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's what I, I, I want my state to fucking legalize it. Because I mean, look. This, all this stuff I've bought, it does impair you. And I would say that you do get high. It's not the same high. It, there's, there's that little, that little zing is missing, you know, but it's still, it's still high, motherfuckers. And the mushrooms, the mushrooms will fuck you up if you take too many. I took two 
And I'm telling you, it knocked me out. Like, I was just like, man, I can't do shit right now. I mean, I, I went out and walked my dog, but I regretted it. Because I was falling over and shit. People saw me walking from... They probably thought I was drunk or something. The way I was walking my dog, dude. Um, the Chichin Chong gummies. I've seen those. I've seen those. Uh, don't smoke that shit. Homeless have schizo attacks on that. On this... Uh, homeless have schizos attacks on this? I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. It just metals me out. This is not really that strong, man. Um, but I know that in other states, uh, yeah, you know, they sell the pure stuff. And then it's it's like, I guess this is like the, the extract that's in here. But the, the vape stuff is smoother. Uh, but anyways, uh, tonight we're trying this supposed weed that we bought. You know what, what, what really is... It, you know that little warning sign right that little warning sign right there it's it's it literally it's a weed plant and it's, it's an exclamation point i mean that's to show you that it i mean that's showing you that it is weed but somehow they're selling it i don't know i don't feel high yet i think i would have already felt it if this was real weed so I don't know. this one takes a little bit but it does mellow me out like i do like before I know it, after fucking, you know, I'm just there, like, just chilling, like, oh, yeah. So, I'm, I'm guessing whatever this fucking ghost shit is, it's probably uh, extracted from uh, uh, Indica. All this shit I've been buying, it's probably Indica-derived, because all of it knocks me out. None of it gives me that energetic high that I like. Uh, some Cheech and Chong have some good stuff. It takes four... Uh, forever to kick in regular is not the cheaper well the edibles man i'll be honest with y'all man those edibles all those gummies that i've been taking it takes me four hours to feel it and i i for me i don't know what it is with you guys but i've taken it on an empty stomach and waited four hours and then it hits and it's like it's mid honestly it's mid but i'll take him right after eating lunch and i'm talking about a meal eating lunch and i'll take them right afterwards it sucks because i'm all i hate the aftertaste but right after i'm full that i just ate a meal i take them and it hits harder four hours later i don't know why for me with the food it it, I, it does hit harder like i'm telling you those those gummies knock me the fuck out uh, which I really don't like also I don't want to be a fucking dead zombie on the couch I couldn't even play I couldn't even play my ps4 I was just staring at the screen holding my remote I was like I can't even play I mean this feels good but I can't even play I can't even do the things I do you know what I'm saying so I mean you know to a certain extent I mean you know they're they're good it just depends on what you're trying what kind of high you're trying to get uh so yeah I don't know about those Cheech and Chong motherfuckers just trying to make some money in their old age. I wouldn't trust those sons of bitches. <laughs> Damn, motherfucker. Happy Friday. At least I'm getting a bus from the tequila. I know that much. Anyways, thank you, Super Saiyan Joku, for sharing uh, your, your envy with us, you son of a bitch. You lucky motherfucker. You better appreciate every day of your life that you wake up in a state where, where goodness is sold everywhere. Happiness is sold in every street corner and everybody loves one another. You dumbass. Don't you ever fucking feel bad for your life. You have it made. Son of a bitch. I'm over here suffering, shopping around, uh, talking to fucking browns, getting ripped off for money and shit. Yeah, my fuckers. Cheers. I love you guys. We'll, we'll we'll see how this hits tonight. God, just it tastes good. Kind of fruity. That's always a good thing. Oh yeah, cheers. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyways, let's get with the comments, man. We're fucking around for content too much longer. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's do this, motherfuckers. Uh, the first comment, it's motherfucking Doug Unfunny. Let me hit it for him. Woke as fuck. Uh, and he left a, a timestamp. Uh, let me, let me hit it and then I'll read what he said. The movie is going to start. I'm just going to have this in the background and sh That was not a firecracker. Uh, 
No, that was not a firecracker. Uh, and actually, I usually don't hear gunshots on 4th of July or on uh, Christmas Eve or New Year's. It's usually on Friday, Saturday nights. Um, I don't live in a nice neighborhood. I'm lucky I look like this, so nobody fucking bothers me. Believe me, nobody. I'm, I'm the lightest skinned person in my neighborhood. And nobody wants to talk to me. Or tries to rob me either. Uh, I don't know why. Go figure. Must be the little shorts I wear when I walk my dog. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, Doug on Funny goes, What the fuck, son? Where do you live? Stay safe, my friend. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Um, yeah, I mean, I live in the south side, motherfucker. That's where I live. Um... Yeah, it was dangerous, you know, motherfuckers actually, like, uh, not far from it, and it wasn't, it was, because it was a 4th of July the day before, uh, when we did that show, but the day before, and not far from here, there's a car wash, probably a few blocks down, and there was a few families there that posted up and were doing the firecrackers there at the car wash, because they didn't want to do it in their home, so they did in the car wash, and were, they even took the grills, and they were grilling out there, the motherfuckers, but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, the day before, the, one of the motherfuckers there went and went over there, and he, uh, and he fucking went over there to shoot the, the you know, because they, they fucking don't like each other, and he went over there, and he shot the grandmother's house, pa 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 the grandmother trying to fucking, you know, let me kill your grandmother, motherfucker, but it killed the little dog, and that little dog, that guy loved that little fucking dog, it wasn't even the grandma's, the grandma's was watching the little dog for him, and the guy got fucking pissed. And so on the 4th of July, and that family's over there at the car wash, throwing a fucking party and having fun and shit, doing a firecracker. This guy goes by, man, and he goes, pa 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 and he takes off. Arr! The motherfucker shot two toddlers and a lady, and the both kids died. That's where I live, my friends. That's where I live. And I was just down a couple of blocks on the street, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I've been here for 10 years, and I've witnessed uh, three... Maybe two, no, no. Maybe two, I don't think that one guy died. I've witnessed two murders for sure. The third guy, I think he survived. I don't know, his his face was fucked up and caved in. Uh, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, I don't know what they're smoking over there. Uh, the cunt, they could be smoking bath salts. Uh, that's why I asked, what is this shit, you know? And it says right here, man, don't worry about it. I, I'm, it's, it's, T, it's, it's the, T, the weak THC. It's not even the good stuff. Don't worry about it. Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't live in a safe neighborhood, but you know the way I see it. As long as you know you you keep to yourself and mind your own business, and, and you don't attract people, you're okay. All right. You know, believe me, nobody comes up to me and says hi. And that's fine. I'm fine with it. Uh, anyways, cheers, Doug. I'm funny. Uh, thank you for that. That happened live. The good shots right outside my window and shit. And I, and I don't know. No one got shot. I think the motherfuckers, the party, their new motherfuckers just moved in. I think they just well, they shot the, the the gun in the air just to say, hey, pa, 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 uh, you know, showing off and shit. About three weeks ago, they're the same thing. They just went outside and shot it or something because nothing happened afterwards. But that sounded like an AK man. Like the motherfucker just went out da, 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 just to see what it was like. It was fucking loud. Uh, but yeah. Anyways. Let's see who else is next. Oh, Rocco, fuck my life, this Satanist. Let me hit it for him. Oh, baby, oh, baby, oh, baby. Rocco. When the Son of Man celebrates the 4th of July video, he says, holy shit son of man make sure you fall asleep with teflon on your chest man cheers hashtag live uh i've thought about it but maybe if you fall asleep if you fucking get shot in your sleep because you know uh yeah at least you were asleep motherfucker so it's all right yeah that's just that's all right uh I I've, I've I don't know I know people are stupid that they shoot into the air the bullet comes down you know it doesn't come down with as much force it still comes down you dumbass uh, that's all I gotta say it's like a, a piece of metal hits you in the head 
and a fall of, uh, you know it already blew up or whatever the casing or whatever but it's still gonna come down and fuck you up uh anyways it'll kill a kid for sure uh those fucking trailers are are fucking thin and shit the bullet comes right through it and shit anyways cheers rocco don't worry i'm fine motherfucker i don't have to sleep with teflon uh Oh, this is fucking up. Look, it, it got Timmons thing and it's really old Robo Iger. Let me fucking refresh it. Why does it do that? I hate that shit. Here it is. You see, the last time I thought that you all had made fake accounts, but that thing fucks up from time to time. <laughs> Let's see. Uh,. Let me hit it for Robo. I'm sorry. This is all fucking me up. I think this weed is hitting me. Konnichiwa. And Robo says, uh, also on the 4th of July video, this happened live. Damn, sorry I missed it. Glad you're okay, son. Cheers and happy Independence Day. Hashtag. Sorry, I'm hitting the button too soon. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it happened live. Fucking gunshots right outside my window. It was literally right outside my window. They, they, whoever shot it, shot it right out here. And then they ran back inside, and the motherfuckers. Anyways. Cheers, Robo! Don't worry, y'all motherfuckers work to my... That's a normal day in my neighborhood. I hear gunshots all the time. It ain't nothing new. And you never hear sirens, or police sirens. They're too afraid to come to this neighborhood, so those pussies. I walk my dog all the time. In the morning and at night. Anyways, Anthony Timmons. Oh, on the Diddy's lawsuit. Hey, that's another thing that YouTube's done. Look, they like censored my fucking Diddy. Uh, <laughs> fucking thumbnail, I don't know why. Uh, he says... The whole Diddy fiasco is getting ridiculous. Yeah, tell me about it. I mean, it's not ridiculous. It's just insane. The 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 amount of debaucherous, illegal things this motherfucker was up to and shit. It's fucking insane. Anthony Timmons also says on the Son of Man reviews the the House of the Dragon. I don't give a shit about the sex and the gore. I just don't watch it because it's Game of Thrones story. I don't trust him after what they did with the fans in season 8 of Game of Thrones. Screw George R. R. Martin and his bullshit. Well, I mean, to give that fat, lazy son of a fucking whore a little bit of some credit. It wasn't him that ruined season 8. It was the writers because the writers were in a hurry to go do some other... I, I, what did they go do? They went to go do some movie or some other shit for someone else. And they just wanted to finish it and leave. And they did. that's why they did it only like fucking 5 or 6 episodes. The last season was not even a full 10 episodes. That was some bullshit. And everything was rushed. Because they were rushing to get the fuck out of there. They were like, ah, let's finish this contract. Move on to something else. And that's why they, they fucking dicks did what they did. And you go back and watch interviews. The fucking, the actors knew they fucked up. The actors, because they would ask them, like, uh, can you, you can't tell us any spoilers, but can you tell us, like, a face of what, you know? And everybody would go, You know, about the ending, and everybody would go, like, make a face, like, meh. You know. And, uh, I think one time, what's his name? Uh, uh Peter Dinklage even fucked them over in an interview, and he did it in a fucking, not, like, uh, a very satire kind of way where he was supposedly comp complimenting it but it was a dig where he said oh yeah the writing is great i mean i take the women down into the crypt to hide out and he goes the women to hide into a crypt when we're fighting dead zombies resurrected and we're going down into the crypt he goes it's perfect and I was just like, oh, this guy's digging at them like they're fucking idiots. That is shitty writing and shit when you think about it. Oh, my God. But uh, well, we'll talk more about House of the Dragon tonight, Timmons, because I got to review that ass. Y'all motherfuckers. 
Uh, Rocco Fuck My Life on the Diddy's lawsuit says, He's a good boyfriend. Plus, the, and he puts a bunch of laughing faces. Plus, the way you ended it with Andrew. Cheers, and a man. Hashtag. Live. Yeah, I said something like, um, because I was saying, like, that Diddy's all like, oh, you want the job? Bring your boyfriend over. He's going to do some gay shit with me in front of you. And then that, that then I, then Andrew showed up in the chat, and I was like, speaking of gay shit, Andrew Satchez is here. <laughs> that was badass. Cheers, Rocco. <laughs> you fucker. Uh, the, the Star Wars movie. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't even know what movie they were going to do, but I know they wanted to do something, and they left in a hurry, and that's why they fucked it up. Uh, that's why they fucked it up, a uh, Gomer. But I wasn't, you know, I didn't even become a Game of Thrones fan until just recently. Like, when House of Dragon Season 1 came out, I watched House of Dragon Season 1, and I got so into it that I became this fucking guy that went online and watched, like, hundreds of lore videos. And then I downloaded all of Game of Thrones, and I watched it all from, all binge-watched all of it. Um, so... You know, I wasn't, I, I probably would have been just as pissed as everyone was from season eight. I already knew from all the videos I had seen, I knew that they had fucked it up, but I, I still watched it and I was just like, yeah, I could have done it. Better. And even then, like, fine, if you want to keep it like this, this is the end of the story. There has to be a continuation. What happens to Jon Snow? What happened to Daenerys' body? The dragon took her away. Is she going to come back resurrected as the Ice Queen? The new Ice Queen of the Dead attacking the Seven Kingdoms and taking revenge on Jon Snow and everyone with protecting her Targaryen legacy off the throne? That would have been badass! But this fat son of a bitch hasn't even finished writing the last book that he started 13 years ago! God damn you, George R. R. Martin, you idiot! We're moving on, Rocco, you're pissing me off, we're not even done talking, we're starting with the discussions, we're just reading comments and shit. JB watches. Let's make some new motherfucker. On an old video about Rob Liefeld. Is sick with Disney and Marvel. Rob licks peanut butter off of his dog's ass. I'm going to add that there because he didn't finish it. After he did the first time and this dog killed itself. Ah! <laughs> and he kept eating the peanut butter out of his ass. Ah! <laughs> Rob had nothing to do with creating Deadpool, period. Rob is a sinner and bears false witness. He now has to live in sin. Son of a Baptist minister. Such a disgrace. Holy shit, this guy. Uh, ah, this comment's crazy. <laughs> Cheers, JB! <laughs> ah, that's a crazy comment. I don't even know what to say to this. Do you know Rob Liefeld personally? <laughs> Are you in the Baptist church or what? That's a crazy comment. I like that. I like it. I think this is a cool comment. Whoever you are, JB, uh, cheers and thank you for watching. All right, all right, let's move on. Anthony Timmons on the Hellboy, the Crooked Man video says, Yeah, no, it didn't look right. It hasn't looked right since Ron Perlman. Just my opinion. Well, I guess. Well, yeah, because J Ron Perlman has the motherfucking, uh, uh, you know, profile or physique of a goddamn demon. Or ape or monkey or something. I don't know. He looks like, you know, like a uh, caveman and shit. He's got the perfect look. You don't, I don't even think they put prosthetics on him. They just painted his ass red and put horns on him. That's the way he looks already. That motherfucker. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting, you motherfucker. Timmons also says about Charlie Sheen in that video. Charlie Sheen is a complete waste of good oxygen. There's a lot of people that are a complete waste of good oxygen. But you know what? You gotta give everybody their chance at winning. Oh, yeah. Yes. 
That's the only motherfucker in life that's winning with AIDS. Full blown AIDS, and that motherfucker's been winning for years. Right, let's keep going. Oh, Gomer Kyle. On the comments video. <laughs> Thanks, fellas. And they, thems. I had a great trip. Me and my friend watched the new Kong and Godzilla. Oh, Foley and Deadpool. Foley? What do you mean? I know. What do you mean by Foley? The, the Mick Foley documentary? And which Deadpool? The first one, I'm guessing. So, the new Godzilla and Kong was okay, but colors looked like a unicorn threw up. Yeah, it was too vibrant. It was the worst. 6.5 out of 10. Foley was great, 7.5 out of 10. Don't get the hate I've seen. Don't get the hate I've seen. Anyways, y'all Deadpool and Wolverine is only two weeks away. Let's fucking go. Cheers. Hashtag. Got more spoilers for you tonight about that movie. Hashtag. Oh, get ready for this, Gomer. <laughs> Ah, I did that for you, motherfucker. P.S. I didn't mention they screened 30 minutes of Deadpool Wolverine. I heard it was great in case you were going to say anything. Oh, I did. I just dropped the fucking joint here on the floor. I did say it on the podcast. On the, on the broadcast, goddammit. I better not disconnect the computer while I'm messing down here trying to get this fucking shit. I got it. I did. We mentioned the spoilers, and we're going to mention more clear spoilers because we got more fucking of a definition of it and shit and ass tonight. It'll be at the very end. Okay, I'm saving the best for last. Probably around 1030 or something. Anyways, let's keep it going. If not, we're never going to get to this. Gomer says, Charlie Sheen would eat the other dude's asshole. That's pretty nasty. Cheers. P.S. He's probably let him and like it. Hashtag. Well, according to Corey Haynes, not Corey Feldman, Corey Haynes, the one that's, all, that's dead already, the good looking one. Well, then he, did, he, he, he didn't age too good because of all the drugs and alcohol abuse. But anyways, when he was young, he was good looking, you know. I wanted to be him. I think Zach Morris uh, modeled his, his character after him. But anyways, Corey Haynes uh, claims that on the set of Lucas that Charlie Sheen grabbed a bottle of Crisco oil, lathered up his dick, and raped him. That's horrible. So, yeah. Yeah, this guy has AIDS, and he's a fucking piece of shit. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for bringing that shit up, you guy. All right, let's move on. Gomer also says on the Danny, uh, <laughs> Danny uh, Trejo video, Danny Trejo is the fucking man. He's 80 years old. They're investigating it as a hate crime now. I nominate Trejo for honorary woke packer. Cheers. Nah, 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 nah. I don't want that old son of a bitch coming over here and a whiny. Hey, they threw a water balloon. No woke packer. Is gonna get mad when you throw a water balloon at you on a hot day, you dumbass. On your car, that's a free car wash, motherfucker. I like it when it rains. I have to get, get a free car wash. I go outside right away and spray it with the soap and shit, and then go run back inside and let the rain take care of it. Oh yeah, that's free money right there. Fuck you, Danny Trejo. Another thing is, how is it a hate crime when it was a Mexican hitting another Mexican? Not like a normal day in the neighborhood and shit. That ain't no hate crime and shit. It would have been a different race with a different race. Then you can call, call it a hate crime. An ass. Uh, but yeah. Fuck you, Trejo. You'll never be in the woke pack. You're too old and shit. You're no longer cool. Yeah. And you're not certified anymore, you motherfucker. I'm sorry, Gomer. I'm just shitting all over this. <laughs> Cheers. Don't forget. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm just being stupid. I'd be honored to have Danny Trejo in the wall pack. All right, I, I would. I would. The motherfucker. Unofficial or the official or whatever. Anyways. 
Gomer says on the James Gunn. I don't know. I'm hating on that piece of shit. Gunn can eat a bag of dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They sell bag of dicks online. Look for them. Bag of dicks. I think it's. I don't know if it's. Well, I I would be careful on putting bag of dicks dot com. But if you put bag of dicks ma mail bag of dicks, the website comes on, and you can just put the name of the person and the address, and they will send it with an anonymous fucking you know whatever. It's. I mean, I guess it's from their company, but they won't put your address. But they'll send it to that person, and with with a message like you know all nice and everything, and the message will say. You're a piece of shit. Now eat a bag of dicks, or or whatever you want to say, and then there are gummies in the shape of dicks. Ah, I said it to a boss of mine after I quit. Ah, I called my my coworkers and I was like, "Did she get him?" And then she goes, "She was mad all day. We 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 just we she never said anything, but <laughs> we knew what it was." I was like, "Yes, it worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. They do that. They do that shit." Cheers, motherfuckers. That bitch deserves more than a bag of dicks. But you fucking bitch. She needs to get fucking... I don't want to say it, but it needs to happen to her. Anyways, let's move on. Super Saiyan Joku on the Danny Carey video. Danny, Danny Atrejo video. This guy's crying. Who? I don't know who was crying. Like, that don't even be in the fucking parade. You have mad money. You have the money to get fixed or do yourself, motherfucker. Cheers. Hashtag. Oh, motherfucker. Joku, you're high or something. You don't know what you're saying. But like, I, I know what you're saying. Uh, it, it's water, Danny Trejo. What are you bitching about, Pendaka? Hey, somebody threw water at your car. Shut the fuck up. Get mad when they throw a rock at your car, Pendaka. You started some shit. They knocked you and your brother out. They knocked both of y'all motherfuckers out. All because you got mad because of water. The fucking pussies. This is all I'm saying, man. There's motherfuckers out there that are so fucking miserable with their own existence that they will purposely, I don't know, back up or double park or do something just to try to piss someone off so that they can take out their anger on someone else and, and, and get into a fight or cost something or get a gun. There's motherfuckers that are so miserable with their own existence that they will purpose, pur purposely try to gaslight someone else. And it's usually someone like you. You have to realize that bullshit like that, someone throwing water at your car, is not that big of a fucking deal. All right, you let that idiot keep on being miserable and hating himself and drive away. <sighs> That's all I'm going to say. Because people get shot and killed every day because there's motherfuckers out there that are miserable with their own existence. That they have to go out there and look, gaslight, look for something, start something. And those are the people, you know, they're just miserable human beings. What are you going to do with them? They wake up angry and they go to bed angry. They got nothing better to do in their lives. Not even the weed or the, be the beard. Nothing satisfies them. It's just sad, you know. When, when you become that kind of person, that's just fucking sad. Yeah. Lessons in life. Let's move on. Gomer Kyle of the Thank God for Amber Girl Rose's body and her pink pussy. She needs some hair on that bald ass head. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. She's sexy without it, I'm just saying. I mean, she's sexy with it, but without it, it's fine too. Maybe it's more of an aerodynamic for her performed fellatio on her. John's and Jane's. Cheers. Hashtag. Aw, oh, you motherfucker. I have to see where the smoke is going so I can, so I can go like that. I'm not used to it yet. I, I just did that today. I was like, it looks badass. I'll do it again for you, Gomer. Live. 
<laughs> that looks crazy. Look at a fucking acid trip or something. Uh, I think that was the last comment. Let's see. Yes. Gomer Kyle was the last comment. Thank you all for your motherfucking comments. I appreciate you guys. You make the show and shit. Whatever you send me down here, uh, your weed strains or whatever you're you're smoking and shit, that we go show it here. Or you just send me whatever, like Gomer Kyle who sent me this earlier too. Since he sent me this, uh, Gomer sent me this, and uh, it's pretty cool. Y'all ready for this? Check this out. Here it is. If you want to go out and get it, you can go out and get it. Have fun with it. But people do like it, I must say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. That's pretty good, Gomer. Here it is. If you want to go out and get it, you can go out and get it. Have fun with it. But people do like it, I must say. Uh, that's fucking badass, bro. That's fucking badass. Uh, oh, Anthony Timmons is here. Cheers, Timmons. <laughs> and we're throwing you the wolf pack, motherfucker. Live. Thank you for being here, Timmons, you motherfucker. Let me cheers you on the chat here. Cheers, Timmons, you motherfucker. Fucking interrupting, interrupting the goddamn show for your bitch ass. <laughs> That's how we do when we do what we do, we do, motherfucker. Uh, yeah, send me stuff to the social medias. I'll show it off here. Whatever weed you're smoking, whatever you're drinking, whatever you're seeing in life, or just some bullshit like Gomer Kyle just sent me. We'll play it on here and shit. It's a good idea. Would you all buy a Cinnamon t shirt? Some shit like that? I don't know. That'd be crazy. That's all I'm saying. This fucking hair gets in the way of everything, man. I got my earrings stuck this today on my hair, and I was pulling them, and I was like, fuck. Uh, yeah. Having long hair is cool, but it also uh, gets in the way of shit. Uh, but anyways. Thank you all for the comments. You make the fucking show. Uh, uh, but let's, let's, let's get away from that ass. Uh... And let's get this show on the fucking road, y'all. And let's start off and kick it with a goddamn weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, I got to start us off with another downer. Because the legendary Shelley Duvall passed away at the age of 75. Cheers to this lady. Wendy from The Shining. She played... The most terrified woman ever. And it's fucked up because they're saying that. Who was the director? Uh, was it Kubrick or whoever the fuck it was? I don't even remember. I think it was Kubrick. Uh, that he would fucking verbally abuse her and yell at her. Right before shooting this scene. So she would be all like, uh, and then crying and then action. <laughs> that, that's what you fucking bitch you fucking whore you're no good and she's there crying and then action that, that, that's the kind of shit that he would do and shit uh i don't know man uh, uh she was also you know where i remember also from from the, the first movie because i didn't see the shining to us i was a bit older but the first fucking movie i saw her in as a child was Popeye. She was olive oil. Oh, Popeye, bros. Ah, oh, man. This lady lived a long time. 75, bro. I mean, I mean, people live longer than that nowadays. Some people live till they're like 90 and shit. You know, but 75, like, shit, I'm just trying to 
chug along the next five years, you know, just 75. God damn, it's a good, good fucking thing. Yeah, D Kubrick put it through hell, like you said. Yeah. Um, she's a legend, man. She's a legend. And then everyone going to remember her. I, 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 think, I feel like not enough people are remembering her or talking about her passing away. It did just happen like a few days ago. But I, I didn't even see this on Twitter or on Yahoo. I saw this on my... Um, there's another place I go to find news, and that's like when I really can't find shit that's popular. Like, I just need something. I'll go to that one. And th that one popped out, and I was just like, I was like, what? She passed away? Why isn't this on the other? Do I have no one on Twitter saying anything? Uh, Robin Williams was dope as Popeye. That was the best movie, bro. Um, Popeye was good. It was... It was Everybody was in it. Wimbley with the burger guy and, and, and the sweet pea was in it. And then even Popeye's dad was in it. They had every, they had the whole lore. And they had the movie was perfect. They had the lore and everything was in it, man. Uh, yeah. She'll be missed, man. And, uh, uh you know, for her family misses her and uh, condolences and all that ass. Uh, I'll just say one thing. I feel that she deserves more than, uh, the little recognition she's getting now because I, I like i said i haven't seen so too much on social media about it uh but shelly duval here's to you cheers from the woke pack all right let's get in to the good stuff the juicy stuff you're all here for and this week None other than Jennifer Mayer, Tobey Maguire's ex-wife, has come out in defense of Tobey after he was seen with 20-year-old model Lily Chi at a white party. Because in Hollywood, they have these white parties where everybody wears white. So that way, when they come on you, nobody sees, you know, nobody sees the cum. Uh, but b believe me, that little girl is covered in cum stains. You just can't see it on that fucking dress that she's wearing because it's pure white. Um, anyways, he was walking her to her car, and as you can see his face, he was like, oh, shit. And people took pictures, and they're like, oh, this guy, fucking Toby McGuire. But right away, his ex-wife has come out and said, hey. This is the father of my three children. A man I was married to and fell in love with him since we were in high school and we saw his sweethearts and shit. This is a perverted rumor. He's just being a gentleman. She must have been a little buzzed or confused and he was just being a gentleman and he was taking her to the car because that's the kind of that's the kind of good good man that he is. He, he, she's old enough to be one of his daughters. He wouldn't be trying to sleep with her. That's what his ex-wife is saying. Of course, everyone else is saying that this motherfucker has taken some fucking pointers from his best friends forever, Leonardo DiCaprio, and it says, oh, yeah, it's time to downgrade to the 20s, my friend. Oh, cheers. I'm not in that stage, and I don't think I'll ever will, but... For motherfuckers with money, like the great Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, the first original Spider-Man, uh, just shit. I hope he tucked her in that night and not just walked her to her car. Of course, she had to remove that cum stain dress. I'm pretty sure Toby has cum stains all over his shirt as well. Uh, yeah. Look at his face when they took that picture. He's like, oh shit. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh my god. This little girl, what is she? Asian, Mexican, Filipino? Is she like like her mom got around the fucking world? <laughs> Not the block. Her mom traveled the world, motherfuckers. That's when you get supermodels when you travel the world and fuck around. This is what you give birth to. Oh my god. Woo! Toby McGuire, you fucking 
It must be amazing being Spider-Man. Not only being able to to do this, but literally having your ex-wife defend you after you're caught. <laughs> oh my God! Cheers, Tobey Maguire, you handsome fucking devil. You're my Spider-Man for life. <laughs> You see, Gomer, this is the kind of guy you want in the woke pack. A motherfucker, the, you know, swindling women left and right, dancing like the, the, the emo Peter Parker. You don't want no Danny Trejo getting mad over water balloons. Fuck that guy. <laughs> anyway, so we're moving on. <coughs> Forgive me. It's been a while. We're moving on. Because none other <coughs> than Stormy Daniels has come out and is getting angry and is mad. Get ready for this, boys. We'll see how many viewers we lose after this. <coughs> but she's getting mad because apparently cause she lost her fucking... Uh, or her her, her her case against Trump that it was dismissed, and now she's being ordered to pay him six hundred thousand dollars for the legal fees, and she's saying they're trying to take my husband's house and all my porn money. This is ridiculous and absurd. You know, the other girl, she didn't get her case dismissed and she's getting weekly checks. And meanwhile, I'm still having nightmares of getting fucked by the president. My God. Ah. What, you think you're just gonna, oh, let me sue somebody and get some money. No, motherfuckers, shit has to get paid. His lawyers, your lawyers, and if you lose, you're not going to get no money. But guess what, you dumb slut? You still have to pay all the fees and all the people that worked on the stupid shit. Oh. Some people are stupid. Like when they get into the, you know, like when people want to sue people and they get a lawyer and then... They get one of these, you know, scumbag fucking pussy ass lawyers that, you know, that like those guys, they're all like, oh, I'll get money for you if you're in an accident. And they'll take you to a fake doctor and do all this shit, you know, but those motherfuckers, like when they run into like a roadblock or something that they can't sue and they're like, well, we can't or whatever. And then they're all like, well, you still owe me this much because I worked for you. And then they're all like, well, I didn't have any money. That's why I'm too bad. A lawyer doesn't give a fuck if he wins or loses. You still gotta pay him, you dumb bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was, you're right, Gober. When you accept hush money, that means you agreed to hush for the money, you dumb bitch. And when you don't hush and you took the money, that you're breaking the law in, you know, in, in legal terms, you're the one that's fucking up. Yeah, that's why you have to pay the man. Pay him. For fucking you. That's right. So my Daniels, now you're paying the president because he you got the privilege to get fucked by him. Look at those tattoos on his right <laughs> on his right. Trump looks pumped as fuck. Biden, there's no way you could ever do this to any woman, Biden. Never. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my god, by the way, that would never be a short video. <laughs> because they'll definitely give me a, co a strike for that shit. It'll probably get away with it because it's like three hours long for this fucking show or whatever. <laughs> they'll never find it. <laughs> Cheers! But since we're talking about dumb sluts, bad baby posted, remember? Catch me outside. Cash me aside. Yeah. She's a millionaire now. She posted a pic a video on IG of her baby daddy's Darnell or Danielle beating the fuck out of her. 
for fucking not listening to him. <laughs> oh, he just dropped her ass. Right to, oh, and he didn't even beat her. He just grabbed her and pulled her head down. Boom. But she's so drunk and stoned that when he did that, just pull, pulled her head down, she literally went straight, straight face down to the concrete like an idiot. And so she has a bruised fucking, uh, you know, eye and needed he's gonna all fucking can't see through her left eye and shit like a dumbass. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you saw this coming. This is going to happen eventually. Somebody was going to cheat on somebody. Somebody was going to beat someone up or whatever. The problem here for this dumbass is there's surveillance cameras. And now he's fucked. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, he's he's uh he's pretty much fucked. Uh he ain't going to get none of that money and he's probably going to be forced to pay child support once they're not, they're no longer together because he just got her pregnant and she's going to be left a single mother with a lot of money and she needs the father to give her more money cuz that's how the system works. So this guy royally fucked up left and right. Number 1, it's on film and number 2, you just lost your cash cow, buddy. She makes millions on her OnlyFans, you motherfucker. You think you're going to post your dick online? Motherfuckers are going to give you money? Yeah, maybe be, I mean, a few fags might give you money. If I see, uh, maybe for a month, I'll, I'll give you for a month just, just to check it out and see what you're doing. But, you know, you're not going to make millions the way this little hot-ass hottie is, you dumbass. You lost your cash cow. What the fuck are you beating her up for? What does she do? Huh? If you caught her fucking somebody, you should have gotten a camera, recorded it, and then sold it on the internet and make some money off of it and then pimp her out some more. You want to fuck some guys? All right, bitch. Let me call my friends. We're recording a gangbang tonight. We're selling it on the internet, you whore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would have done. I'm just saying, you know. You got to look for opportunities when there's opportunities and make some money. All right. This guy gets mad over shit like this, and now... He ain't never going to see no more money. And this little girl is going to get more money from him. So, you know, I guess it works out for bad baby. She's going to continue being bad and having babies with motherfuckers that beat on her like this. Eh, what are you going to do? The shit happens. Oh, well, oh, well, oh, well. Uh, cheers to Bad Baby and her situation. <sighs> all right, all right. But let's get into the main attraction, fellas. Let's get into the nitty, ditty, the gritty ditty. Sorry, I always fucked that up because I'm already buzzed. We already talked about it last week. Everybody's uh, childhood hero, Sean Combs, is at his number ninth total so far. Lawsuit headed into trial. Hasn't started yet. Last week, number nine turned out to be an uh, ex porn star called Om Unique. Om, O M, and then the word unique together. Um, unique. Uh, she only did like two videos, so there's not a lot of you know stuff you can watch or not of information, but it's there. You can see it. She's all right. I mean, it's whatever. So like, there's like, some good facial expressions. I mean, I'm showing you the best parts. I mean, you know, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, you know, she's claiming that Puff Daddy wanted to give her a job so she didn't have to do porn anymore, but the agreement was that. She had to bring the boyfriend over and do some gay stuff. She wanted Puff Daddy wanted her boyfriend to suck his dick, swallow his cum in front of her, and then he would give her the job. And so she got the job because she has a fucking phenomenal boyfriend who is willing to do anything for her, apparently. Uh, so she got the job, and the job was apparently being pimped out. To her, his friends 
at white parties where everybody wears white because they don't want to see the cum stains when people come on you. Uh, and yeah, she was a whore there at the parties and being whored out to people, basically. And that's what she's suing them for, just like all the other people that were sexually molested and abused and drugged and fucked by him and all his friends. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we were at. Well, in good old-fashioned bad boy style, Mr. Sean Puffy Combs has come out and said, can nobody take my pride? Can't nobody hold me down? Oh no, I got to keep on moving. And boom, he, he posted on Instagram, comb airs, motherfucker. And he went on vacation on his private jet. He even showed his Colombian fucking uh, pilot. And he went rafting. Oh, yeah, whitewater rafting, motherfuckers. That's how we do in the bad boys and shit. Uh, yeah, he was showing off, saying, what's up, motherfuckers? Can't nobody hold me down. Can't nobody take my pride. Oh, no. I got to keep on moving. It don't matter. There are nine motherfuckers trying to take my money. It don't matter. The motherfuckers raided my fucking multi-million dollar mansions. I don't give a fuck. I'm one of the richest motherfuckers alive. And I'm going to keep being one of the richest motherfuckers alive in my private jet. With my goddamn Colombian private fucking pilot right there. Can't even speak a word of English. But that motherfucker... Worked for cheap and he flies a goddamn jet. And now I'm over here, white water rafting like a fucking pip, a keg. The Egyptians never even did this, but I do. That's what he's saying. Well, everybody found this very offensive and insensitive, especially with all the allegations and videos of him beating on Cassie in the hotel room and all that ass. Uh, and they started criticizing him that he don't give a fuck, doesn't have any feelings. And then I guess his publicist says, this doesn't make you look good, my friend. It doesn't at all. And so uh, he decided that he's just going to delete everything off of his social medias. Uh, so there's no content. He hasn't posted anything yet. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Fucking Diddy. I mean, why are you trying to be fucking flashy? When you're being fucking nine lawsuits of women and men claiming you fucking raped, drugged, and sexually molested them. And shit. You idiot. Ew, the fucking... Trying to show off. I ain't going to jail. Oh, the fuck? You're going to jail, motherfucker. Believe me, you are going to jail. You dumbass. There's no way this guy's not not going to jail. All right? There's no way. Fuck this guy. Comb airs. Fuck you and your black jet, son of a bitch. You let me down. You're my hero, you idiot. Uh, all right, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this son of a bitch. I'm done with this diddy fiasco. I'm done with all the raping and all the fucking molestations and all the goddamn debaucherous shit that's been going on in Hollywood in this country for the forever. I'm done with it. You sons of bitches. Vote orange. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers. All right. And we're done <coughs> with the goddamn fucking uh, pop culture breakdown. Take another hit of this. Fake weed. But I feel it. I feel it, though. It's fake weed, but I feel it. As I promised you guys. Because we're about to go into 
the ass of the show. And I'm probably going to be angry and my hair is going to turn even more white after fucking, uh, well, after going over what we're going to go over. So I need to prepare myself for this bullshit. This is with you guys. Ugh. Y'all motherfuckers. Cheers and happy Friday, motherfuckers. This is for you. Mm. <sighs> Cheers, motherfuckers. All right. <sighs> now that I've got myself into it, let's get straight into the weekly comic book nerd shit. And this week, we're starting off with new behind-the-scene images of Ellie and now confirmed Dina. Isabella Merced, this little girl who's playing hot girl for James Gunn, even though he has her like dressed like an idiot over there, a little hottie. She's, she is Dina. And now we're getting more confirmations from the behind-the-scenes fucking pictures here they are walking to the set both of these uh, little girls and here they are filming and uh they got guns and, and knives and holsters and backpacks and is it wrong that i'm getting and they're holding guns too you know like is it is it wrong that i'm kind of getting horny watching this <laughs> girls with knives and guns and holsters this is cool lesbian little girls too they're gonna be lesbians by the way in case you didn't know the story of the goddamn fucking video games so this is them probably hunting abby smash to get revenge after abby kills Hoyt with a baseball bat beats him over and over until he's a bloody fucking mess a uh, fucking pile of fucking smush and shit. Um, there, I have a theory. I have a theory that they're probably going to stretch the second game because the first game was literally the first season, and they kind of rushed. They paced through it really fast. I I was surprised. I was like, they're moving pretty fast. The first season's the first game. And I was right. The first season was the first game till the very end. I think the second game is going to be split into two seasons. They could do three, but it would be risky. Because it's like, are you really going to keep people's attention spans are not that good anymore? Not like back in the day. I don't know if you could keep people for three seasons. For this kind of shit. Especially when there hasn't even been a third game. You can keep them for three seasons. For four seasons. I don't think so. So I think they could split this. I think. And I think they are going to. They're going to split the second game. To fucking two seasons. And I think the first season is Abby killing Joel. And the little girls going to revenge on Abby. The the third season will be when the roles flip, where now Abby has to fucking team up with Ellie and shit, and they become friends, and she ends up fucking forgiving her for killing Joel, or whatever the fuck, because they're looking for this other little lesbian fucking girl she likes. Uh, so I think it'll be like that. Timmons! It's actually a good show, Timmons. The acting's great, uh, and it's good. I mean, it's a... Uh, it, it, it's faithful to the video game and as far as it takes liberties it just adds to the lore i guess there's one episode that is completely homosexual uh i'm a big fan of it it's great uh it's a great episode the acting's great i mean it's just one of those shows that i was actually very surprised and i and i and i said you know what this is how you do video game shows and uh and twisted metal to me 
is also how you do a video. It all depends on, on the video. Like, you have to be faithful to it, but you also have to know how to do it in live action because not everything translates exactly the same. So you do have to change stuff. Um, I think this show has been good. I don't know about season two. I didn't like the second game. I hated they killed Hoel, and the whole game was just littered with smut and lesbianism and shit. No dicks and pussies. It was all just scissoring. And it pissed me the fuck off. And I didn't even bother playing that ass. I just watched YouTube videos of people playing it. But whatever. Alright. Uh, so I didn't even care about it. But I feel that the general audience. Who doesn't know anything about the game. They will lose interest the minute Hoel. Uh, Pedro Pascal is dead. And there's nothing but lesbi lesbianisms and little girls rubbing each other's pussies. And that's when the general audience is going to turn it off and change the channel. And they're going to lose viewerships. That's just my theory. That my theory. I'm just saying it out there. All right. All right. I think people are more comfortable with two men kissing. But when you see two girls being gay, I mean, come on, man. Come on. I mean, that's just how people think. I don't know. Just saying, you know. You know, don't come out don't come out of here and judge me. I'm just, you know, I'm the guy who reports what's on Twitter. And that's just my theory. But anyways, enough of this lesbianism. All right, we're done. These little girls are coming out and they're going to be gay. All right, get ready for it. It's coming at you on HBO Max pretty soon. I don't know when. They're still recording it. Uh, I don't know if I should keep on smoking the weed or move over to the other stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll see, you guys. We'll see, we'll see. But let me get into some quick reviews and probably the only good stuff I'm actually going to compliment on this fucking show because there is a lot of bullshit and toilet ass and shit on the rim of the toilet that you're going to be licking on tonight. But anyways, here we go. House of the Dragon Season 2 Episode 4, The Battle of Rooks, Rest the Cut! God damn it. This was... Finally, a good fucking episode. And I, I mean, I, they were just dragging it up until the story finally got good. In fact, the the, the other one should have been great, too. Or, uh, no, season one ended that way, where, where, where Vagar killed the, the little boy. Um, oh, my God. This one is so great. The culmination of this is obviously the Battle of Rooks Rose. Uh, Rooks. Uh, Rook. Ro ugh. Rooks. Rest. Alright. And um, the main shit is that the whole episode, Aegon is, you know, is showing now that he's drunk and he doesn't know how to be a king and he's just an idiot. And everyone else is pretty much running shit. And even the mom tells him because she's like, she, she starts telling him, like, you, you need to start paying attention to what we're telling you to do and start learning. And he gets mad. How dare you? And she goes, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to hang me like you hung all the rat catchers, your own mother. You're going to hang me. And she tells him, she tells him, like, you're nothing. You're just like a president. You're like, you're like a president. You're Joe Biden. You're just a face. We run the shit. Now you just fucking do nothing. Do what you're supposed to do and do nothing and sit there. Shut the fuck up. It's basically what his mom tells him. And he's getting drunk and he gets pissed. And so he gets on the dragon and he says, fuck you, I'm going into war. Like Aegon the Conqueror, the person I was named after, this fucking idiot. And he gets, he gets on his sunfire uh, and he goes down there to a fucking uh, uh, attack. Because uh, they were, gonna, they were taking over uh, a Rook's Rest or whatever. And the whole point of this was that Sir Christian, it was a trap. They were trying to lure Rhaenyra to go down there with her dragon, but in instead, Rha uh, Rhaenys volunteered to go, which is this lady. And her dragon, Maelise, which is the red dragon. And she went down there. And when they were gonna, when she went down there to go save them, uh, Aemon was gonna come out with Vagar and attack her. Uh, and Amon sees the brothers with Sunfire arriving, and he's all like, you idiot. And instead of helping him, he fucking holds back. And then he finally, when he decides to attack, he burns the brother, this fucking dick, while he's fighting with the other dragon. 
and you know the the brothers the king fucking he falls to the ground and shit and then Vagar kills Melis and of course Rhaenys dies along with her dragon it's crazy ah uh, and then when they find uh, the king he's all burnt and shit and Sir Kristen's all like fucking shit this was not part of the plan and Amon's all like eh he grabs a dragger and he just walks away this is badass uh, the next episode, I feel it's going to be slow because here's what's going to happen next in the story is the next couple of episodes. What's supposed to happen is, um, she, Rhaenyra is going to send her other two sons away in a boat with the dragon. Uh, fuck. It's a blue dragon. I forget what his name is. Um, sea smoke or something like that. But she sends them along with them, with them because they're the youngest and she doesn't want them to die with the war because she goes, well, fuck, Melis just died and they killed the dragon. And so now the shit's going to hit the fan. So she sends the sons away. And then the she now uh, Jace, uh, no, Jace, Jason, is it Jason or Jaceris? I hate their fucking names because they all sound the same. The eldest of Rhaenyra's bastard kids uh, because they're not purebreds. He's now in charge of some of the armies, and he decides to find other bastards of the Targaryens, and they call them dragon seeds. You know, bastard sons that were born from the kings, uh, from whores. And they try to teach them how to ride dragons. And some of the dragons, they are not they don't like them, and they eat them and shit, and a lot of people die. But eventually, only four motherfuckers are able to tame dragons. They have six dragons, but only four motherfuckers are able to tame the dragons. And they've already shown them to us. They've shown one of, the, one of them is the black dude that saved the sea, sea snake. Well, that's actually his brother, his son, his, his bastard son. And then the other two are two of the smiths we saw earlier in some of the other episodes. Something the white and this other guy that was this big guy that that made the swords uh, for the king or whatever. But those guys are also bastards so they're going to tame dragons and shit. So they're going to have new dragon riders to fight in the war. That's probably the next episode or two even. Uh, what episode is this? This is barely episode four. I think there's eight in this. So this is probably the next two episodes. Eventually, what's going to happen is they're going to capture the the kids when they're taking them away by ship. They're going to capture one of them, and the other one flies away in the dragon. And they shoot the dragon from the boats. And that dragon dies the moment it gets back to uh, Dragonstone. It, makes it, it saves the kid, and it makes it all the way back. But as soon as it lands, it dies. And, uh, yeah. And then the oldest, Jaceris, or uh, whatever his name, Jason, or whatever the fuck his name is, the eldest of her sons, takes off to try to go rescue the little brother that was captured. And him and his dragon get killed. Uh, and I got a feeling that's probably where they'll end season two. Because there's more. There's still more. Oh, there's so much more. They're going to stretch this to four seasons. Uh, but it finally got good, and I think from here on, it'll pick up and start getting really good. Because now we're fighting, and we're seeing dragons fighting in the war. And that's all I was waiting for, man. This was badass, and it was dragons fighting in the air and shit. It was so fucking cool, and it was a good 20 minutes at the end. Uh, so, I like it. Uh, I recommend it. Go watch it. House of Dragon. It's good. All right, that's just from a fan of motherfuckers. But another thing that's good, and my final good review for this week, because we're going to move on to ass after this. The Boys, episode seven. There's one left after this, motherfuckers. And then there'll be the final season, whenever the fuck they film it. Oh, this one's crazy. I'm showing you the best, worst parts, if that makes any sense. Oh, but in this one, they finally find the plan. And the plan is they're using a shapeshifter that's going to infiltrate the White House and kill the president. 
And the shapeshifter, oh, I'm, let me rewind that. The shapeshifter, the way she shapeshifts is she has to touch the person. Uh, oh yeah, this is the deep. The deep's having sex with fucking the octopus. Like, you've already known this. If you're watching it, you know this. It's disgusting. The way she shapeshifts is after touching somebody and I guess scanning their DNA by touching them. Then she rips off her skin and to reveal the other person that she just touched underneath. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> But they figure out, like, oh, shit, they hired a, a shapeshifter, and that's how they're going to kill the president. And they freak out. Meanwhile, Homelander, that fucking, uh, this little redheaded girl brings her web weaver and says he's the leak. Because he was leaking stuff to the boys, but he's not the actual leak that Homelander's looking for. But he confesses and tries to ask for forgiveness. And Homelander rips him in half. It looks so cool crazy and even that little redhead is all freaked the fuck out then homelander sends fucking the deep and black noir to kill the boys they all get into a crazy fight uh man there's some crazy ass shit that happens bro i'm showing you the best parts i love this fucking show but eventually uh a train shows up and pretty much reveals that he's the leak and he fights the deep and then he decides to run away with his family he tells him like that's it i'm done because these guys are gonna go tell homelander that i'm the leak and he does disappear frenchie and miko or whatever kaiko or whatever her name is they finally got the scientists to make the virus to kill the soups and to try to escape he he injects it into keiko or whatever kamiko Kamiko in her leg and her leg starts disintegrating and so they have no choice but to chop it off and you know she's basically Wolverine so she can just grow another leg but the whole point is she's gonna feel all the pain of getting her leg chopped off and this guy's all like you know what we have to do and he hold on to this and he gives her a stuffed animal and they show this bros they show him sawing away at this fucking leg and it's crazy they're at a bar they meet people people take selfies with them blah 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 they leave home and this bitch comes home to huey and decides to fuck him oh ellen moriarty and they even show her ass when she wakes up after they have sex and she goes to the bathroom i'm gonna try to pause it right here oh yeah her little no ass <laughs> they show it bros but you find out that she's the shapeshifter and that she actually at the bar like ellen like this starlight wakes up and she's actually tied up somewhere and this chick at the bar when she took a selfie with her took her dna and then drugged her at the end of the night and then replaced her oh my god and that's where it ends there's one more episode and so it's like the way i see it is they're gonna kill the president with the shapeshifter pretending to be starlight Everyone's gonna think Starlight fucking killed the president. And then that's gonna give Homelander and them an excuse to say we gotta put the Starlighters because they're terrorists in in concentration camps. Because they already got uh, from Tech, Tech Knight in the last episode the deal to use all of his prisons as internment camps. And so that's what's going to happen, and that's probably how it's going to end going into Season 5, whatever that's going to end up being. Oh, this fucking show is badass. This show is badass. I love this show. I don't care what anyone says. People are saying, oh, it's just more of the same shit. Now, fuck you. You're, those are people that don't watch it. You got to watch it from the very first episode to really be invested in this story. This is already... Shit's about to hit the fan. Like, when you're talking about they're close to nuclear war where they're going to destroy the planet. Like, this stuff's going down, motherfuckers. And they got one more season and it's over. I recommend going and watching The Boys is all I'm going to say. Moving on to that. It's taking one hit from the motherfuckers. All right. All right, let's move in to the main ass. 
And we're going to start off, unfortunately, with DC. Because it is being reported today. Probably like 30, 40 minutes. No, about like an hour or two ago. By Nexus Point Media. Whoever the fuck these fucking guys are. Uh, they are now reporting. Rumored. That Kumail Nanjiani is the one that's going to be cast as Booster Gold for James Gunn in his universe. Now there's an obvious race swap from a blonde blue eyed guy to a fucking Indian man. That's a very obvious race swapping right here. But for what the character is supposed to be, I think this motherfucker is perfect. I, I mean, you know, me, I'm just trying to be faithful to the comic book, so my fucking feeble little mind never imagined uh, anybody of not being blonde or blue-eyed to be Booster Gold. I didn't. Um... I was even thinking Homelander could be them. You know what I'm saying? But Kumail Nanjiani has the perfect personality to be Booster Gold. And those motherfuckers who don't know what Booster Gold is, is a motherfucker from the future. In the future, there's peace and prosperity, and all you have is history. And in the history books, you read about superheroes and Batman and Superman and all that bad, crazy shit that went on in the past. And this guy wants to be a superhero, but I mean, what he can do in the future when there's peace? So he, I don't know how, they get a time machine, and he takes all these gadgets that are normal in the future, like flying, gravity, and shit like that, all these gadgets. And he travels to the past, to where Superman and Batman are, and he tries to join the Justice League and be a superhero with his gadgets from the future. And that's what he is. He's a, he's a charlatan. He's a fake. Uh, just a wannabe. And I think this guy is would be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think it would. I think it would be perfect. But again, this is just a fucking rumor. Coming from Nexus Point Media. Some fucking... I don't know. I've never heard of them. Have you? Of course not. So, take this with a fucking grain of salt in the ass... It's probably gonna sting when they drop it in your around the rim, because that's that's what happens. But don't worry, Charlie Sheen is just a phone call away. He'll come right up and lick it up. Uh, anyways, let's move on from this ass and move on to the main ass. And of course, it's none other than Mr. Jimmy Gunn. Who deliberately places other people in danger by not CGIing or green screening and demanding everybody to do their own stunts and wire work and all this craziness that Marvel and Disney would never do because they'll get sued off their ass. But James Gunn doesn't give a fuck because he's an amateur and he says, fuck it, I am running Warner and DC into the ground with this budget of this ass. Well, guess what? The stunt man broke his leg filming a stunt in his stupid ass Superman movie. The dumb ass unsupervised, untrained, they probably got, oh, find me the cheapest guy you can find. I'm trying to save some money to take my wife over there to the Belize and shit to hang out with some celebrities. Fuck you, James Gunn. Look what happened. It's an amateur. He was trying to swerve in in between cars and he hit a car and shit. And here's the aftermath. James Gunn fucking pissed off going up and looking at the damage of the car. Where, where, why didn't you swerve out of the way? He's asking the driver. You're paid to swerve and not hit him. This is a movie, you idiot. So with his arms crossed, his stupid ass, fucking red shirt and his brown fucking shoes, you dumbass. Steve Job wannabe, you dick. Look at that guy over there, ISS, ISIS. He's, he's, he's over there in line with terrorists. This fucking guy. Fuck you, James Gunn. 
always looking for someone else to blame for your faults and your tragedies. It's your fault this man broke his leg, you fucking idiot. If you would have just CGI'd the shit and, and paid the goddamn visual effects artists, they would have made that shit look just as good as James Cameron's Avatar. But you fucking lazy piece of shit instead pay this amateur to try to swerve in between cars and then you're over there yelling at your fucking crew asking how the fuck did this happen? Fuck you, James Gunn. Piece of shit. You're ruining Superman and spending Warner's money. All of this. This accident cost Warner $7.5 million. You idiot. We're moving on to more ass. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm sorry. This is just James Gunn's fucking world. All right. And his ideas about this and that. Here's some more of his... His, his renovating amazing ideas and shit. Superman. Buried in some kind of fucking ditch or hole that he fell into. There he is. And instead of CGIing the actor, making sure he doesn't get hurt. He's like, no, no, no. Get in there. We're going to cover you with dirt and bricks. Oh, it's all the way to your neck. Don't worry. You'll still be able to breathe. It's only for a little bit. It's only for a little bit. There he is. Actually covered in a hole with dirt and bricks. James Gunn, you fucking moron. This is a lawsuit waiting to happen. God damn it. Oh my god. I don't even know what to say to this. Poor David Cornswit. Thinking that this is going to be his career-defining role. It's going to establish him as a player in Hollywood. It's going to establish you as ass. No one's ever going to see you again. Thanks to Mr. James Gunn there and his bright ideas. Put you in a hole and shit and take some pictures. It'll be badass. You dumbass. Here's some more cool stuff for all you guys who like spoilers. Here's... A fucking fight again instead of using fucking stuntmen and motherfuckers that are trained and CGI the shit out of everything in the background. No, let's go to shut down Wrigley Field or wherever the fuck this is over there in Chicago or wherever the hell this was. They shut down a whole baseball field and then they string corn sweat and some other dumbass. Uh, on some wires and they're fighting and flying towards it and they I don't, I, I don't have the video because I didn't have enough time I was working today you sons of bitches I even got to the chat late all right it's not my fault all right, all right but the video they're like they're literally slamming them into each other like that and it's like you fucking idiot just trying to concuss the shit out of your main actor James Gunn you dumbass uh, but here's more. Here's a, the only video I actually got. I got it the night before. So quit bitching, sons of bitches. Anyways, here's the fucking video. And um, it's like this guy. And he punches the shit out of Super. You see? And that's David Cornswit. That's not even the fucking <laughs> stuntman. That's the guy they're paying fucking millions of dollars. And they're fucking dragging him the shit across the tar pit. All of the shit. Kevin Feige with a CGI and shit. No one's getting hurt on my body. I ain't paying for no insurance. <laughs> or therapy. This motherfucker. You know how hot it is right now outside and they have this actor completely covered in this black suit and this black sunglasses or whatever like can he even see through that costume you know what i'm saying let alone run at full speed or at superman look he runs at full speed oh how the fuck is you lucky he's not passing out right now fucking games gun you idiots God damn it. This is just fucking ass in the making, y'all. I don't know why everybody thinks this James Gunn's gonna make this universe amazing. The proof is in a pudding, and the pudding looks like shit. All right? I'm showing it to you right now. Anyways, the leakers are saying that this bad guy is, is supposed to be Ultraman, which is a, a clone of Superman, supposedly. Uh... Underneath that mask, whenever Clark Kent Superman finally rips the mask off of him, 
you're gonna see that it looks just like him and he's gonna be like what what are you and he's a clone that lex luther made or or that other guy what's his name that james gunn's brother is playing max lord we already know that max lord is going to play like a type of billionaire playboy kind of like tony stark who's funding the justice league which is nathan fillmore and hawk girl and mr terrific he's funding them but he's also a sleazeball you know he's he's not really a, a total good guy but max lord could also be funding this fucking guy over here and the engineer which we also see the engineer who's part of the authority which they're going to introduce supposedly or maybe just her but here she is. This, actually, this little, this little girl's fucking hot. Whatever her name is, Gabrielle something. Uh, look at that thigh gap. It's really small. Damn. So nice thighs. Anyways, uh, yeah. Like, here she is behind the scenes, and she's beating the shit out of fucking... And that's David Quartz, and that's her, too. They're not even using stunt people. That's what I'm telling you. James Gunn's an idiot. This could all be CGI. Just pay the motherfuckers. Try to save some money. Ah, oh, if, if if I don't spend all the budget, I get to keep what's left over, and I get to buy diamonds for my wife, my younger wife. That's what James Gunn is saying. Fuck you, James Gunn. You better CGI some special effects on this shit. It better not look like an episode of Power Rangers. That's all I'm saying. God damn it. This is already alarming. Uh, she doesn't even look like the way she's supposed to in the comic book. She's all silver unless he's gonna CGI the shit out of her and she's gonna be all silver and shit. I don't know, like like T-1000, all liquid metal and shit. Is James Gunn that cool, everybody? Is he? I don't know. You tell me, motherfuckers. Alright. Um, this, actually, this is probably in the mid of the movie. <coughs> because they did show us some screens last week and shit we showed you of Superman getting arrested by these motherfuckers so this is probably after that fight the whole government and this this Ultraman and the engineer and the authority and Rick Flag they bring Superman in we don't like illegal aliens, motherfucker. This is Trump's America. You better fucking come over here legally and pay your fines before you fucking come in here and start getting benefits like everyone else. <laughs> um, fuck you, James Gunn. And fuck you and your Superman and shit. I don't think this is going to be good. We're going to keep getting... I am still waiting for it. For the unmasking of this fucking piece of shit Ultraman to see if he really is another fucking Superman under there. And the, the leakers were right and James Gunn's a dumbass for, for saying the leakers were wrong. You can tell he's, he's a dumbass just by looking at him. Piece of shit. Uh, but anyways. Superman! We're gonna get more leaks and we'll probably have Millie Alcock or Millie Cock or whatever her name is, the little girl from House of Dragon. She's gonna be Supergirl and it's only a matter of time before we have pictures of her being Supergirl on this ass. So get ready for that shit. Probably next week or whenever this shit is shown. But anyways, I'm done with Jimmy Gunn and his bullshit. Dumbass. Let's continue some more comic book pop culture media ass. Because guess what, folks? Like I said, this is the time of the popcorn wars. And they continue with Alien Romulus now showing off their popcorn bucket. And it's none other than the face hugger wrapped around a, a metal bucket and shit. <laughs> Glossy and shit. Not bad, not bad, not disgusting and perverted like all the other ones. This one's kind of like cool and it's disgusting because I don't like the face hugger's disgusting and it looks like it's removable and not, that's just fucking disgusting, you know? I don't want that. But they did send a, a, another preview or trailer. It's a stupid, I'm not going to show it. But they send this uh, to critics and, 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 you know, motherfuckers like, uh, Eric Voss and all those other pussies that, you know, those paid chills on YouTube. They send this VHS preview to them of Alien Romulus. 
Uh, it was shitty. It was like a minute. Um, that's fucking dope as fuck. And I bet you none of those pussies they send this to had a VHS that they all had to go to pawn shops or get on eBay and fucking order one of those pussies. None of those motherfuckers are cool enough to have VHS. I still have porn on VHS that I watch on weekends. I, I, like to, I like seeing those lines and every once in a while it skips and goes up like that. You know what I'm saying? That shit's fucking vintage as fuck. Um, anyways, but yeah. None of those motherfuckers had VHSs, so they had to go get some and shit. And here it is, man. Alien Romulus, uh, I think, is finally the alien movie that is going to live up to the hype and finally live up to the original. That is my uh, guess, you know. Uh, that's just from what I've been seeing in the trailers. Like I said, there's a lot of these characters are going to be non-binary, transsexual, homosexuals, and lesbians. But, I got a feeling the story is going to be amazing. I got a feeling the graphics look amazing. And I got a feeling that it's just going to be the perfect amount of everything. It's going to satisfy everything. The gays, the lesbians, the straights, and everyone's going to love this movie equally. Everyone. It's going to be like, it's like Jesus right here. I don't know about this popcorn bucket. I'm not going to spend $45 on this piece of shit. All right? And neither should you. Stop buying these dumbass plastic fucking non-biodegradable pieces of ass and contributing to these popcorn wars. Just buy the stupid regular one, you dumbass. They're ripping you off with the popcorn anyways. Uh, all right, we're moving on from the popcorn wars. We'll see what else comes out next month. Everyone's doing it from here on. Everybody's gonna have a popcorn bucket. Get ready for this. You fucking faggots. Anyways. Speaking of faggots. Or lesbians. I should say. The Acolyte episode. Fucking. Where are we? I don't even remember. Let me see. Because I have my, my fucking notes right here. Episode 7. Oh god. One more left. <laughs> I hate watching this. I hate watching this because the way I see it is that if this was targeted to an audience of five, seven-year-old children, adolescents, I would say it's passable. It's passable. As your target audience, which I would think should obviously be Star Wars fans. And by Star Wars fans, I mean the people that literally grew up with it as children. Where they were kids when the original were at. They were teens or, you know, mids when the prequels came out. And now they're grown-ass adults. That should actually be your target audience. And your main audience. Because those are the people that grew up with it. This is written by idiots. And if it's not written by idiots, it's written for kids. Or children. Because it completely disregards, and you've heard this already, from everybody. It completely disregards everything that is Star Wars and lore and makes its own bullshit up. Some of the worst, you know, and, and up to this point, I hadn't trashed none of the actors. As I had been saying, all the actors are doing great. If that's their character and that's how their character is supposed to act, they're doing great. All of them. Up until I get to this episode and I've had enough of this ass and it's time to start ripping some assholes. It's going to start saying, all right, let's be faggots up in here. Let me start ripping some assholes. I'm going to start being a real major faggot motherfuckers. Let's do this. 
What the fuck type of Jedi are these Jedi? You know, the biggest complaint about the prequels that George Lucas made in the 2000s was Anakin Skywalker. Oh, Hayden Christian sucks ass. Oh, he's too whiny. Oh, Darth Vader complains. Oh, blah, blah, blah. He's a little girl. Those were my complaints as well at that age. Looking back at it as an, a man who's probably reached the age that George Lucas was at the time that he did the prequels. I understand why Anakin Hayden Christian acted that way. Because he fucking was supposed to be those things. He was supposed to be immature, full of himself, a whiny little baby and bitch. And that's why he fell to the dark side. The Jedi are not supposed to be like that. And Anakin was, which was why he fell so easily to the dark side. That's, and I understand it now. After all those years. The problem with this fucking show is that it takes place thousands of years before the, the fucking prequels. Thousands of years at a time where there's nothing but peace in the galaxy. And these group of Jedi that they're showing us. And by the way, this episode is finally the reveal of what happened years ago. This whole is it's a whole flashback. It's showing you what happened. What actually happened. Uh, and it's lazy, by the way. Because a lot of the scenes are literally the exact same fucking scenes they showed in episode three from that flashback episode. The exact same scenes, except instead of the camera being in front of here, it's on this side showing that. This character was watching the whole time. But they show the whole scene again. And it's like there's nothing new there. Except for the fact that oh, it's a different angle. And he's watching the same shit happen again. So they're just wasting time. Wasting time in the episode with bullshit. Retellings of stuff that. Oh, so there was a guy hiding in the bushes. Big fucking deal. Nothing different. Significant happened. Fucking stupid as fuck. Ah, uh, these all these Jedi are very emotional. They're not calm. They're not, you know, like one with the force. They're very emotional. The stupidest thing in the beginning, they're in the forest with a metal detector searching for something and get ready for this. They don't know what they're looking for. Because then later on, they're around a campfire, and the youngest, which is the guy who took the vow of silence that that little girl fucking give the poison to that he drank in the other episode. Um, that guy's why exactly like Anakin, and that's what pisses me off. He's acting like Anakin. He's being whiny and complaining, and he's saying, we've been here for months. And this planet is empty. And there's nothing here. And blah, 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 blah. And what are we even looking for? And then I was just like, wait a minute. You just said you've been there for months. That you haven't found anything. You saw them with metal detectors looking for shit. And then you say... What is it that we're looking for? Because you never told me. What the fuck have you been doing for months? Oh, go look for something. What am I looking for? Oh, don't worry. You'll know when you find it. Okay. And just been walking around like an idiot with a metal detector. Are you telling me that's what you've been doing? This is how stupid the writing of this fucking show is. It's how stupid the writing is. And I'm not lying. Go watch this episode. You don't even have to watch none of the series. Just go watch this one episode. And just the fucking dialogue doesn't make sense. He literally says, we've been here for months. We've been searching. We haven't found anything. And then he says, what is it that we're looking for? Fuck me. Fuck me. 
and they tell him we're looking for a, ver a convergence or a virgins in the force. Basically, we're looking for an Anakin Skywalker, and these little girls are basically Anakin Skywalker split in half into two beings, one good and one bad. That's the explanation. Oh, my God. All of them, like I said, are super emotional. So the Asian dude's all like, we need to save her. She's going to be my Padawan. I can sense it in the Force. The ma His master, she's really angry and really like shut the fuck up listen no no the other guy is really impulsive i don't want to be here we've been here for months and shit and in fact when he finds out that the little girls were made out of the force he says like oh we need to catch them and he jumps in his speeder and takes off what kind of jedi are these just impulsive do whatever they want to do like they're not even trained none of them and they're all supposed to be masters and shit <sighs> this scene that they show is what everyone's been talking about i know you probably already heard all your fucking neurotics and everyone else talk about this scene but for whatever reason the little girl comes out and says, you know, I need help because the little girl started the fire and all of a sudden she doesn't. Oh, I didn't mean it. Fucking stupid. And so she goes to find the mom and she says, mom, help me. And when she gets there, for whatever reason, she decides to do this, which is make some weird and start turning into smoke or something. And so then the Jedi looks and the little girl looks like she's turning into smoke too. Now, this looks evil to me. So any normal person or Jedi would have just done what he did and he took out the sword and he stabs the smoke. But when he does, she fucking stabs her and before she dies, she goes, why did you do this? She chose to be a Jedi. I was going to let her go to be with you. Well, then why were you turning into a smoke? Like, if you're going to attack. This is how bad the story is. It don't make no sense. Oh, it gets worse. All this fighting is going on and shit. And of course, the crazy uh, Darth Maul looking woman takes over the mind of the Wookiee. And the Wookiee starts attacking. Oh, no, all of them. All of them. I'm sorry. They all use their... Com the witches. The lesbian witches use all their combined lesbianism powers. And they fucking uh, uh, hypnotize the Wookiee to attack them. And so he does that. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, fucking Trinity... Kate Moss pops out and she fucking saves the day. I'll see her show her right now showing up. And she fucking flips him over and then, you know, frees him from the thing. But I don't show it here, man. And I fucked up by not showing it here. Uh, all these witches that were over here fucking in trance and shit. When Trinity, you know, uses the force on the Wookiee, they all just collapse and die. All of them. So just like that, the that's what I was wondering from episode three. Who, what killed them? The fire didn't kill them. Why were they on the floor all dead together? No explanation. Oh, Trinity stopped the spell. It gets even worse at the end, because at the end, Soul's all mad and shit, and uh, and and he's getting all pissed off with with Trinity. Or what not about everything that happened. And they almost get into a fight. And this is where I'm saying is what kind of Jedi are these? They have no control over their emotions. And that just, just completely ruins Anakin. Because Anakin's supposed to be the only Jedi that had no control over his emotions, which is why he was a whiny, uncontrollable little bitch. And then and everything went to hell because someone like that ended up with that much power. Who are these people and how did they get to become Master Jedi acting so recklessly and uncontrollably? It's just insane. So... 
Instant Soul wants to turn himself into the Jedi Council and say that I we killed all these witches and we fucked up and this little girl and her they all they all everybody died except for one of them, and that's what he wants to do. And no, she reports and they lie. All of them they take a pack and they lie, and they just say that that they they that all those bitches died in the fire and they saved the little girl. And that's how it fucking ends. And when the episode ended, this was like an hour, 40, 40 minutes long because, you know, the credits or whatever. It's an hour, 40 minutes. When it ended, the only thing I could think about was like, that's it. That's the big secret that you accidentally killed the mom. The witches died unexpectedly. And everything else, except for the Wookiee fight, everything else you literally had already shown us in episode three. Literally. So this entire episode could have been shown in a flashback of two minutes. Of the Jedi lying. And shit. And that's really the main objective here with Kathleen Kennedy and her lesbianism ways is to make the Jedi the bad guy. And lesbianism, homosexuality, transsexuality, and molesting and touching of children is good in the Force and the dark side. And that's what this is all about, and this is what it's all about. Fuck you, the Acolyte. The worst fucking bullshit I've ever seen. You ruined Star Wars for me. I am no longer a fan. I'm only here to trash it. And this is a motherfucker who is surrounded by nothing but Star Wars and Sith Lords all over. This is money thrown down the fucking drain. All of the years of hard work that my parents fucking worked to give me money as a child so that I could go buy all this ass has all gone to waste. Sons of bitches. Because of ass like Kathleen Kennedy and Disney. We're moving on. This is some bullshit if there ever was any. Fuck you. We're moving on to some good ass. And believe it or not. <laughs> this is actually coming out of. Sony, because they announced this week that Brendan Gleeson was cast in Spider-Man Noir, and the current rumor is that he was cast as Norman Osborn, the main villain for the series. Now. These ain't the Norman Osborn we know. Because this is Spider-Man Noir. And in this story, Norman Osborn is more like a gangster. It's not really like a Green Goblin type of shit. Uh, he's just a, a fucking uh, like a gangster. And so it'll be fucking cool. This guy's this guy's believable. I mean, he he didn't look like them in the comic book, all badass and good in shape. But if he's gonna be a mob boss, he's perfect. You know, he's the leader of the mob there, the Norman Osborn and shit. So I'm doubt and happy with this current. Uh, he did get cast, but the rumor is that's who he's playing. So we will see him on the show, and I think that's a good plus and a badass thing. I don't know uh, who he's playing, but if he plays Norman Osborn, this is a great pick for them. Just take it like that. Another rumor coming out this week from the same show is that another villain that will be on this show is none other than the Sandman Flint Marco. But this variant in this universe doesn't have sand powers. He's more like Tombstone, but he can tell he could turn his body into stone or rock. Uh, not sand. It's just rock or stone. But Flint Marco is going to be in it. Um, look, I am very excited about this show. 
And this is so neat, but this is going to be coming out of, uh, I think it's Paramount. Yeah, but it is Sony. And can you imagine a Spider-Man Noir with Nicolas Cage being a superhero detective? Because it is Noir, and it's back in these 30s and shit. I just really, it, I don't think they will. But if they do the sepia fucking tone for the whole show, it'd be so badass. I would fucking fall in love with it so bad. Everything looks fucking gray or like a brownish fucking tan color. I think Nick Cage is going to knock this out the park because it'll be more gritty. It, it, it is more gritty. It's more gangster. It's like Dick Tracy, but Spider-Man dick tracy with gangsters and shit uh i'm excited for this and just the thought of you know these these actors on screen together uh whether he's playing normal osborne or not uh brandon gleason but nick nick cage you know with him would be fucking badass i mean it's nick fucking cage man that's all i'm gonna say Oh uh, yeah. Cheers, Nicholas Cage. I'll drink some fucking water for you, motherfucker. I'm already buzzed. Alright, enough of that. Uh, it was Fagata all along. Because the Agatha trailer was finally released. And it was everything we expected it to be. Bunch of lesbian witches and fucking non-binary homosexuals. And absolutely nothing. Nothing. That will connect itself to the multiversal saga. And guess what? Even though they teased that that body right there that's right in front of her. It's supposed to be the dead body of Wanda Maximoff. Wanda's never going to come out in it. Yeah. And that little boy with the crooked face or skull or whatever, the deformity he was born with. Uh, you know, he is supposed to be Wanda's grown up son. But it gets even weirder because I already said the stupid ass story is that it's actually like the spirit of the boy took the body of somebody who was dead and is now, I don't know, it's just going to be sucking stupid. They're just Marvel forcing, again, more agendas on people, but at the same time trying to be horror, saying soul possessions of dead bodies and reanimations and demons. You saw their demons. Aubrey Plaza being a lesbian ex-lover to fucking... Uh, it, it, uh, Agatha Harkness over here. Yeah, that's what she's going to be. And demons, apparently, are going to be in this. And they're going to try to make it like a horror. Some shit and ass. Um, this is going to be a bigger disaster than the Acolyte. A bigger failure. Because this is another fucking probably $200 million piece of shit. The Acolyte costs like $140 million, by the way. That sucks ass. Well, I, I won't shit on the Acolyte too much of their price because at least the visuals, top notch. I don't know about this. I mean, a lot of this looks like practical effects. If you're going to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on practical effects, uh, it's just kind of fucking dumb if you ask me. And Aubrey Plaza doesn't even look sexy or nothing. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, this show's going to be super gay, and I can't wait to fucking review it. And probably shit all over it. But that's enough of that ass. Let's move on to the big ass that everyone talked about and has been talking about since this afternoon because it was supposed to come out yesterday but President Joe Biden needed to assure the American people that he was still in the running so he told Marvel, Disney, and Kevin Feige to don't show the fucking trailer until today and guess what? They waited 
That's the true story. I'm not lying. The trailer for Captain America Brave New World was supposed to come out yesterday. But unfortunately, Joe Biden said no trailers or nothing tomorrow. Because I'm doing a speech tonight, and that's what happened. So, yeah, here, Anthony Mackie with his blue suit, which doesn't, I hate it. I like the white one. Look way better than this fucking dark blue fucking bullshit. Um, and then a f fucking badass poster, I'm not going to lie. The shield with the Red Hulk pretty much gripping it. Um, now I, of course, well, I'm a fucking nerd. So I knew, and we've been saying spoilers for a long time, but there's a bunch of motherfuckers out there that obviously don't watch spoilers and don't know what the fuck's going on. And these dumb sons of bitches have been going on Twitter, and guess what, motherfuckers? Apparently, these idiots think that Hellboy is in the movie! Whose hand is that? Is that Hellboy? I might be reaching a little bit, but that's Hellboy's hand, isn't it? Oh, you dumb fucking simps. These dumb motherfuckers are the same ones that have been loving all the Phase 5 and all the fucking shows and movies and all the Star Wars. They're so good nowadays. You idiots. Speed point. And guy. Guy with the bands. The bands of no money, the just rubber bands is fucking around your dick. It's all you fucking have, you dumbass. And you don't even know that's not even hell, boy. Uh, yes, there are idiots out there. What are you going to do? Anyways, uh, let's get into the trailer. I can't show you the whole trailer, so I'm just going to show you some cool shots and then talk a little bit about them. But the main shit is that he has a new suit, and it's really, really fucking blue. And in this one shot where he's flying, you can see he has a helmet. And it's the same helmet we showed you in the, the leaks, and it looks like an Ant-Man helmet. It looks like a... F and I guess if he was going to be flying at supersonic speeds, which is what he does at this point. He does the same thing that Iron Man does, where he just suddenly really boosts. He would have to have something covering his face or his skin would rip off. So, yeah, I get it. I get it. But I want you to notice during the scenes when he's flying in the background, it looks like he's flying around some mountains. It's not mountains. It's Tiamat. It's the fucking Eternal. It's coming out of the water from Eternals at the end of the movie. They're finally going to talk about it. Because like we said, that this movie's going to revolve around the Chinese having a medal that they found. And uh, there's going to be uh, Sam Wilson and, 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 and uh, the Falcon, the new ones, whatever his name is, Torres. They're going to be on a mission and they're going to find out uh, about this medal that the Japanese have, or the Chinese, I think, I don't know if it's the Chinese, I think it might be the Chinese, because you know how we're trying to make money over there, so they're trying to say the Chinese, but then the Chinese have this medal, and so then they discover this medal, and then the trailer, you know, the president, who is now Harrison Ford, because they replaced William Hurt, they make a little joke there, oh, I'm getting used to the new look, or whatever, and he says, oh, I, I shaved my mustache. That's why I look different. Shut the fuck up. You're making fun of a dead man, you dumb sons of bitches. That's not even funny. I don't like. I didn't like that joke, but they have to make fun of, oh, why do you look different? Because the man had a heart attack. That's why. You dicks. You know, make fun of it. Anyways. Uh, Harrison Ford tells him, thank you for finding that amazing find for all of humanity. The point is, they find adamantium. The Japanese or the Chinese, some Asian little country they fucking infiltrate, have the metal. And they find out the source of the metal, which is stronger than vibranium, adamantium, comes from Tiamat. You see it in the background. That's where the final fight is happening. The, probably all the countries are fighting for the fucking resources because they all want the adamantium. 
We're going to get Wolverine soon in the MCU. We're getting him in Deadpool and the other shit. But in the MCU, if they're finally going to bring him out of Mantium, we're going to get Wolverine, the, the, the seeds being planted in this movie for the MCU Wolverine. Just you watch. And so Adamantium is part of this. And uh, Adamantium will say that it has, uh, I guess, a resistant to gamma radiation and shit. And so I think that's why Sam Wilson's probably his final suit in the movie will be made out of Adamantium and shit. And he'll be able to fight the Red Hulk with the suit of Adamantium. Because as far as all the leaks and stuff we've known, Mark Ruffalo the Hulk is not in this. The She-Hulk is not in this. Just the Red Hulk is in this. Which again, it's I don't know what the fuck Feige is talking, thinking by doing this. And even crazier is that the Serpent Society, which was supposed to be in this movie, is completely taken out. The original part of the movie was nothing that the trailer showed. The original movie was going to be the Serpent Society. The Serpent Society were these bad guys that the leader funded with biotechnology so they have powers and shit. And the leader was also working on a serum to make the Red Hulk. And that's how we get this. But they completely took out the Serpent Society. They're not even going to mention them at all. Diamondback is in this. But they're not even going to mention the Serpent Society. And the only reason we know Diamondback is in this is because we saw the toys from the McDonald's leaks. We went to McDonald's two months ago. They were given the toys because this movie should have already come out. And McDonald's says, we have these toys in the warehouse and we're going to get rid of them, you dicks. You promised the movie would be out. You delayed it. So we're releasing the toys. And so everybody saw the spoilers already. Diamondback is in it. What is going to end up happening in this version of this new movie is that the leader is now going to use sleeper cells or people he controls. That's how we see Isaiah Bradley and a bunch of people stand up and try to kill the president. The leader is causing trouble and shit. That's what's going to happen in this. And if you didn't notice about this is the leader is in this movie for a little bit. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be in the movie a lot, but they showed him for just a little bit in the trailer, and you can see that he's green. My scary problem with this is that he doesn't have a big head. And I'm thinking, at the very least, at the very least, I get it. At the very least, it should be all the way up to where the hat is. Like, not exaggerated, but make it, you know, all the way. Where he removes the hat, and it's actually all the way up. I hope it's that big. Because even there, he's still leaning forward a little bit. So, it, I hope he does have a big head. That's Tim Blake Nelson, by the way. Y'all, if you didn't know. Uh, that's the leader. He's going to be in this. Um, yes, the Red Hulk is going to be in this. I don't know how he's going to tie in this as far as uh, I don't know how he's going to tie in in this as far as, you know, is the leader going to trick him and convert him to the Red Hulk? Is the leaders, you know, because the leader's obviously pulling the strings and, and making all these things. Um... You know what? It's hard to even try to focus on the plot because when I watched this trailer and especially this one scene, the only scene they showed the Red Hulk. When you watch this, it pisses me the fuck off because this is some of the shittiest CGI I have ever seen. Look at how rubbery and fake and plastic the Red Hulk looks here in slow motion. That I'm showing you. That's so lame. Now, this movie doesn't come out till February. It is just a trailer. So this could just be a working progress. But with everything we've seen in phase five, this is the final product. Not only is this the final product, this movie has undergone 
reshoots after reshoots after reshoots after reshoots. In fact, the last bit of reshoots that we showed from two, three weeks ago, the trailer just came out. The movie should have come out months ago. The trailer just came out. It's not going to come out until February. They've done reshoots after. The new reshoots added all of Giancarlo Esposito. Everything you saw in the trailer that Giancarlo Esposito is in there fighting and shooting with a gun. All of that was what we showed you, the pictures. That was barely just shot. That means that he's not, he wasn't even in the original film. They're just adding all of this. This movie is going to be ass and it's not going to make sense in its own story. And I know the trailer looks badass, but you can make anything looks badass. They make the trailer look like this is the Winter Soldier and it's not. You could tell this is just a piece of fucking shit that just smashed together. And this is exactly what it's going to be. How the fuck are you going to have Hulk villains, the leader, and the Red Hulk, and have nothing with Bruce Banner? Oh, and Betty Brandt, or I forget what her name is. Fucking Liv Tyler is in this. We've already seen fucking videos and leaks of her that I've shown you in the past. So she's coming back as Betty. But no Hulk. No Bruce Banner. No She-Hulk even. Even though you already had the She-Hulk introduced in her shitty show that sucked ass. Here's how shitty the VFX look, man. This is from the fucking trailer. I know I just showed you the Red Hulk and it looks bad. But look at this. Fake ass shit. I'm playing some RTS games on my PS4 right now. That look probably just as good as this. And that's not even Unreal Engine 5. Unreal Engine 5 looks way better than this ass they made the trailer with. Some amateur on Unreal Engine 5 could have made this trailer look way better. What is this? It's fucking absolute trash. These fucking flighter, fighter jets don't even look real at all. At all. They look mad at Oh, what a fucking piece of trash. Look at this plastic. This doesn't even look like real cars. Oh my God. Pray for this movie, fellas. And pray for Anthony Mackie, who looks pissed off in every picture and promotional artwork and shit. And I would be too if I was part of this disaster. They said his movies are already climbed over four hundred million dollar budget. It's more expensive than the Marvels. Remember, we thought that the biggest box office flop of all time was going to be Green Lantern, and then it turned out to be the Flash. And in the same year, the Marvels ended up beating the Flash at being the biggest flop of all time. The Marvels. The Marvels, a Disney Marvel movie, is the biggest flop of all time because they lost the most money when it comes to how much it costs to make and how much did you make back. This is going to be worse because this costs more money already than the Marvels. 400 plus million dollars with all the reshoots. And shitty special effects, by the way, that we've been seeing. That's what the best 400 million dollars gets you nowadays. Just give me the money. I'll film a better movie with you with a bunch of naked chicks. It'll be better than this ass. Anyways. Let's finish it off with the spoilers and the shit everybody's been waiting for in ass. And it's none other than the Deadpool spoilers. Oh, yeah. We've already told you last week the 30 minutes that happens. And I'll go over it again with more details of the scenes you're going to see. But in the beginning of the motherfucking movie, you do see Deadpool in his new life and shit. With his friends and they throw him a party and you find out he's no longer with his girlfriend. She has another boyfriend, but they're still friends and his life is perfect and he doesn't want to be Deadpool and a hero anymore. And he's basically a fucking car salesman, but his life feels empty. And then the TVA show up and they take him away. And they basically tell him, we want to give you an option. Look, your universe is going to die. And the reason your universe is dying is because the anchor in your universe died. And what that means is that every universe has an anchor. This one person that as long as that person is alive, everything's normal. But if that one person dies, 
that's it. Everything starts crumbling and it eventually fades away and die, dies. And he says, and that person was Logan. And he died in the fucking Logan movie. And ever since he died, the Fox universe has slowly been dying. And everything's died, all the X-Men movies, and everything has disintegrated. And the only thing that's left is your little world and shit. So we're going to give you an option, Deadpool, because you're special and, and we, we need your abilities. You can go back to your fucking universe and die with all your friends in the universe and wait there and die because it's going to die. Or you can join the TVA and we can send you to the main timeline, which is the MCU, where you can serve your, pur your purpose because we need you there to fight in the secret wars or whatever. And so that's why this guy says, oh, I'm Marvel Jesus and all that shit. And so he says, I, yeah, I'll do it. So they give him a new suit, a new outfit, and he suits up. But then Deadpool pulls a fast one on them, and he takes their little pads, and he says, fuck you, I'm going to try to save my world. And he starts jumping through universes. And the first place he goes to, and we already saw this, is that he goes to where fucking Logan died. In the movie Logan. And he finds, he digs up the dead corpse of Logan. And it's nothing but adamantium bones, you know, with clothes and shit. And then he, and, and with the, with the, uh, what was it? It was a piece of wood or something that was stuck through his chest or whatever. That's how he died. But he starts fighting the TVA agents because the TVA agents at that point are chasing after him. He starts fighting them with the, the, the Logan's remains, basically, with the adamantians and the corpse. And he fights the TVA and he escapes. And he goes on to more universes looking for more Wolverines. And that he goes and we see Patch. Which is the one where he's at the fucking pool table or, or the, the poker table. And they say that that is not Harry Potter. And it is not Tadgert Edgerton either. They say that it is actually Hugh Jackman. CGI to be five foot four and he's small and he's a comic accurate Wolverine where he's super short and shit. But it's Hugh Jackman, but they just CGI him to be fucking five foot four. And they say that it's hilarious and funny looking. Then he says, Well, you're not the one I need. Fuck you. And he goes to another universe. In the TV, of course, the whole time the TVA is chasing him. So he keeps running away. He goes to another universe and he gets to the old man Logan universe. And he sees and they say it's comic accurate. He looks exactly like this in the comic book. I wonder if it's Hugh Jackman aged or if it's just some old man they found that looks like the comic book. But they said that old man Logan comic book. Exact version. And, of course, Deadpool says, no, you're no good. And he jumps into another fucking universe. And the next universe, there's a fucking, like, a. It, it looks like they say it like if it was Wolverine in the 90s. And he has, like, this badass fucking hair. And his suit's all, like, black and, and rubbery, like, like, yellow and black. And, but he says it looks like he's from the 90s or something. Like, if Wolverine was in the 90s, it looks crazy. And then, and then he says no, and he goes to another universe, and he sees from the comic books Wolverine's fucking crucified on a fucking X. Uh, I'm guessing all these versions are Hugh Jackman's. That's what I'm guessing. Um, probably CGI or something. And he says that eventually he gets to another universe, and we finally see it. And he gets to see the classic Wolverine, which is the brown and the yellow, and that he's fighting the Hulk. And in the trailer, the dialogue you hear in the trailer, that dialogue is not happening in the trailer. And when you think about it, Deadpool, you can't see him moving his mouth because he's wearing a mask. So you can put any dialogue on top of anything and, and fool anybody. But the dialogue in the trailer where he says, wait... Everybody's been waiting decades for this fight. And when he's telling him that, that is not that is not happening in the scene that is showing you in the trailer that he's taking out the knives and he's going to fight Sabretooth. 
he's telling him that when he's gonna fight the Hulk. And he says that it's classic Wolverine and in some a Hulk that looks like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, they said. I mean, obviously it's in another universe, but if you can say it just looks like Ruffalo's Hulk. And they square off. But it's not like, oh, it's not like an epic crazy fight because he just jumps into another universe after this. And he finally gets into the, the fucking Wolverine that we see from the beginning that's a drunk. And that that Wolverine's actually wearing the yellow costume underneath his clothes that we're seeing at the bar. That when he just rips off his clothes, he's wearing that suit already underneath. Um... Uh, so I thought Deadpool was going to find him with the mask on, but no, I guess he puts the mask on later and I guess he puts it on at the end for the end fight. That would be cool, even more badass than him, uh, you know, fucking wearing it in the beginning. They say he doesn't, he only wears it for like 10 minutes. So I guess he's going to wear it at the end. But anyways... He finally likes this Wolverine because of the suit he's wearing. And he decides to take him back to the TVA. And he tells the TVA, hey, I'm back. And look, I found a Wolverine. He's perfect. Let me take him back to my universe. And now there's no more Wolverine missing. And my universe doesn't have to die. And the TVA is all like, you fucking dumbass. That's not how it works, you idiot. You're just... Give us that shit back. You're just causing trouble. And they take away that little pad. And then they zap him. And they zap the other Logan. And they zap them into the void. And that's the 30 minutes the people saw. They didn't see anything else about what happened in the void. Just, you know, what you've seen in the trailer. Um, there was a montage after those 30 minutes. Like quick snippets of just action and fighting. And one of the snippets is right here. And it's the Deadpool Corp. It's all the variants of Deadpool that we're going to see in the movie. Well, a lot of them. We already know the stupid head, uh, the kid pool, the baby pool, the dog. There's Blake, Blake Lively as Lady Deadpool. Uh, cowboy Deadpool, Samurai Deadpool back there, or Japanese, I don't know, he's wearing one of those hats and shit. There's some kind of guy who looks like Slipknot Deadpool. He looks like Sid Wilson. Um, there's a lot of different, there's probably gonna be tons, man. You're probably, this is gonna be the type of movie that you wanna see on digital and be pausing so you can see all the Easter eggs. Or you can just go watch Eric Voss or one of those faggots who are gonna fucking show you all the Easter eggs the next day it comes out. That's how they do it. Uh, but yeah, this movie is two weeks away. We still don't know how it's gonna end. We don't know how it's gonna connect to the MCU. We don't know um, much Besides everything else that I've just told you. We know that Cassandra Nova it has the bad guys and she controls the wasteland. And obviously everybody's stuck there. Nobody nobody is there she rules there, but you know, nobody's really in control because the fog monster, they all hide from it. They all run away from it. The fog monster is what they're all hiding from, and they run from it because it eats them. So they all have to find a way out of there. That's the whole point of the movie. I'm guessing when... The, the, the thing that scares me about it is because people are saying that the end of credit scene doesn't lead into any movie. That it's a joke end of credit scene. So the, the thing that's really getting to what's going on or what we are, we're wondering is how does it end? Is it actually going to connect... To the MCU is our Wolverine and Deadpool at the end going to end up in the MCU because the end of credit scene could be fucking bullshit. That's fine. They could do bullshit and just dead because it's a Deadpool movie. It could be Japinder or whatever that guy, that Indian guy. That could be the end of credit scene. Some bull. Where was I? Where was he the whole time? And he's there. I don't know. Waiting on Deadpool. He's still waiting there from the beginning of the movie or some shit. It could be something dumb like that. That's fine. But the ending has to connect to the MCU and Secret Wars. That's all I'm going to say. Tobey Maguire at the end, 
waiting there with the TVA. Where the fuck? We're trying to make a team here. Or some ass. I don't know. Kang the woman beater. Right there, sitting there, beating a white bitch. I'm back, motherfuckers. I am not guilty. Or no, no, guilty, but I got therapy. Therapy. I don't know. It has to connect some ways, all I'm trying to say, you know. Because all of Phase 5, I killed Feige and all of his bullshit and everything he's come up with from the beginning of time and Deadpool and ass and all of this shit. Ever since Tony Stark has died, nothing has connected. No end. The end of credit scenes used to fill, you know, show you the next movie and, and shit. And connect to the next. Nothing connects. Nothing bleeds in. Everything's on its own. Everything's all confused. This looks exactly like Zack Snyder's fucking universe that he was building. That nothing made sense. No, no, not even. I'm, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. I don't mean to have all the Snyderverse attack me. I did not mean to say that. What I meant to say was this looks like the X Men universe and the Fox bullshit that none of the end of credit scenes mattered and nothing connected to each other. But somehow we were supposed to say that each movie was in the same timeline, even though it didn't make sense after watching the one before. Fuck you, X-Men Fox Universe. And fuck you, Marvel and Disney. And if this movie isn't any good, I'm going to be fucking pissed. But you best believe here in the Underground Broadcast, we're going to watch it on Thursday. And on Friday that night that it premieres, we will be showing you film. We will be showing you videos. We will be showing you scenes and the end of credit scenes and the ending and all that shit like we usually do and hopefully we don't get fucking banned like we have in the past if not we'll be streaming from the emergency broadcast channel you know how we do when we do what it is that we do cheers motherfuckers and that's not a lie because the last time we got a copyright strike was for the godzilla that sucked ass and i showed you all the fights and all the godzilla shit that was badass I But anyways, I am done with the comic book nerd shit for this week. We'll see what ass comes out next week. I ain't done running anything for tonight. And I will leave you with some life advice before you all go home for this evening. Um, that's a good life advice. I think I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. Uh, not all things are worth you getting angry over. Some things are worth you just looking the other way. Things like someone throwing water at your car. Things like someone fucking double parking or being an asshole and cutting you over or just shit like that. Sometimes it's best to just say whatever and chug along the rest of your day. Trust me. Sometimes it's best to just chug along. Cheers, motherfuckers. Thank you for being here tonight, and I'll catch you next week. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?